Okay, we're back. So we're we're here. We've got Selenium up and running. We've got ourselves logged into Instagram. This is the second episode in this uh, playlist. So go to the first episode if you want to learn more about getting Selenium up and running, uh, writing this initial code to actually log into Instagram. Before I continue, don't forget, this would be a really good opportunity for a project to put on your resume. So uh, please subscribe or like if you get any value out of it and make sure to make an improvement, make it your own a little bit, change something about this. Don't just copy it line for line and then put it on your resume. Uh, that's not how you learn and that's not how you get your next internship. So let's just get to it. Um, so first things first, what I wanna do is just remove those lines and put them into their own function. That's pretty straightforward, nothing special there. And then all we have to do here is call it. One thing you'll probably notice is I left this sleep here because it takes it takes a half a second for the web browser to actually navigate to this page. Uh, and by the time this thing kicks off, the username field won't be there yet because it hasn't actually navigated to the Instagram page. You'll see we have fixes for that. Um, there's a, a function called web driver wait that we're gonna use in a second. And what I would do is come back and replace these with web driver weights. Let me put the, put that here. Replace with web driver weight. What I actually want to do next is I want to click on my profile. I, I want to go to my profile because if I go there, I can see my followers and I can see my following. Okay, so uh, one of the differences, the only difference between your code and my code now is I've started to include my password in a different file, um, something we're gonna go over in another video series about following and liking random accounts based on hashtags they post on. But right now, uh, this is basically how I'm gonna import my password without you guys seeing it, but you can just leave your password right here in the file. Another thing that I'm doing, um, I had to include driver as a parameter to log in. I forgot to do that. Um, and when you run it, it just says driver not defined. So now it's defined. And we threw in a wait here. So let's see. It should log us in and it should wait for a long, long time. It gives an opportunity to look around. Now, if I wanted to find out who my followers were, where would I go? I would click this button and then click profile. Then I would click followers. And by the way, this is not enough to see who my followers are. I have to scroll down and then look more load. And then I scroll down more and then more load. And I keep doing that until I get to the bottom. Then I click this X, then I click following and I do the same thing there. And then I can compare the two. So that's what we're gonna have to do here. Let's go back to the main. Uh, no, please. So if I right click this, bring up that inspect tab. This lets me click exactly what I want. Basically what we're gonna do each time is run it and then look for the button CSS that we wanna click. Like what is unique about this button that will let me click it? Um, what do I find here? So I believe there's an alt name for something here. Look, okay, alt name, tech interns profile picture. So tech intern is the username. Maybe I can say if the alt name has the username, the username in it, like so tech intern, if it has that in it, then click on that icon because that will pop up this menu. And then what we need to do is click the profile button in that menu. So basically you need CSS for, the, uh, for this button, the tech intern button and we need CSS for the profile button. So let's look at the at this here. Okay, here, we've got an anchor tag and it's got an href slash tech intern slash. That's perfect. We can just use this href and say, hey, if tech intern, if the username is in that href, click it. And for here, it's the same thing, but instead we have to be a little bit fancier about it. Um, and we have to say if the alt text includes the username, then click it. So let's write a function called nav, navigate to followers. Of course, it's gonna take in the driver because we're gonna actually make changes to it. We're gonna navigate. 
So let's just write some, remember those CSS selectors we talked about? Well, what are they? Let's make an, uh, a new variable, drop down CSS. There was this alt name. So we're getting a little fancy here. Remember I said, if the alt name includes the username, well, that's what this star equals is. It's, about, it's a bit of a regex and we are creating a string for an actual CSS selector. Okay, so the other CSS selector I have is this. Remember we talked about that href. Again, we see that regex. Now, wouldn't it be really useful if we had a button that said click, uh, if we had a function that was click button with CSS? Then all we would need to do is provide the driver, of course, and the drop down CSS. And then we could also call that function with the profile CSS. Wouldn't it be really useful if we had these two functions? We could click the button that would bring the drop down, and then we could click the profile button. Um, so let's just assume we have it, and then let's implement it. That makes this function really clean, um, and we can also implement this fairly easily. Um, and it's going to take a driver and it's going to take a CSS selector. All right. So here's where we use that web driver weight thing we talked about. Web driver weight. Driver for, say, 20 seconds before it uh, dies. And what are we going to wait for? Well, we're going to wait until EC dot so that this is a, a condition, element to be clickable. By dot CSS selector. This is just one of those things you need to know. Um, and you will get better at it as time goes on. And then we're going to pass in our CSS selector there. Uh, and now that we've actually got the element, make sure to get those brackets right. They can be a little tricky. Uh, this function is actually taking in a tuple. It's not taking in two separate parameters. It's taking it in a tuple with two parameters. So don't make that mistake. They need to be wrapped in uh, an extra set of brackets. And now that we have that element, all we have to do is say element.click. Now, like I said in the last video, try to re-implement this login function using uh, this web driver weight. You could say click button with CSS uh, and find CSS instead of doing the find element by name. But just try to re-implement that. It might actually jog your uh, understanding. It might get you learning this better. Now, also, this thing I blew, back, blew past really fast. I just want to explain what it is. This is an expected condition. Our expected condition is an element will be clickable. There are other things element to be to exist, but not necessarily clickable. It might just be a, an element that's there, right? So there are tons of them. You can go on selenium.com and start looking through the documentation to, to learn more. This is the one that we're probably going to use the most for element to be clickable. Now back to importing, we need to basically import the rest of this stuff. We need to import, let's just grab it because there is a lot there's this expected condition we need to import. There's the web driver weight we need to import. This by is another thing we need to talk about um, by CSS selector. Now there are other ways to select elements. You could have by X path. You could have by, I don't know what else there is actually. By, will it tell me? No, it doesn't. Uh, X path is the only other one that comes to my mind. But basically there are a few different methods for you to select stuff. And so this by is just specifying which one you wanna use. So let's grab all of those and let's bring them over here. So now that should work. That should click the button, the buttons that we want. So let's give that a shot. All right, so let's run. What happens? Did I leave the wait in too long again? I do that a lot. I never called the function. How often does that happen to people? Is that just me? I feel like I do this all the time. I wrote a function and then just didn't even call it.
there you go. So now we have written code that's gotten, gotten us onto Instagram and it's gotten us to the profile page. Now there's really not much left, right? All we need to do is click the buttons and scroll through them. Now this is gonna actually turn out to be a little bit tricky because it doesn't load everything at first. You have to scroll down for it to load everything. So keep that in mind. That's what we're gonna tackle in the next video. Really hope you guys enjoy this episode. Remember, there's a great project for you to put on your resume here that's gonna help you get your next internship. Remember to like and subscribe if you do look for internships, if you are a student, because uh, that's what this entire channel is dedicated to. So I will see you in the next episode where we are actually going to finish this program off.